Hi, I'm Michael Hurwitz from AFEX, and I am the Director of Sales Worldwide at AFEX LLC. We're based out of Burbank, California in the United States. And I'm here today to introduce uh, the new AFEX USB 500 product. Uh, this is a prototype of a uh, product we're about to deliver. We're uh, only a, f a few short weeks away from shipping, and uh, we're really excited to be here at DB247 and talk to you about the new USB 500 rack. The USB 500 um, format is not something really new to AFEX. It's something we did way back in the uh, late 70s um, when API came out with their first modular mixing console and we came out with the first commercial product as an upgrade or a replacement for an API console which our young engineer Gary Lydon had invented. It was the EQ2, and it was an upgrade EQ that a lot of famous engineers and producers have coveted for many, many years. And uh, our senior engineer today is Gary Lydon, the same engineer. So when we decided to re-enter the 500 series market, um, we gave this product to Gary to, uh, to do a true reissue classic on the EQ2500. And that was one of six products that we introduced at the AES show in San Francisco this last fall, um, of which we're proud to say we won Best of Show Award for our new 500 series product. So that was kind of the re-entry into the 500 series, but it's something that's in Aphex's DNA, something we've done for over 30 years. The 500 series is a really powerful format for the end user, especially in the studio, because it allows you to have more technology in a smaller space and also at a lower cost. Because the power supply and the user interface, the plugs and the jacks in the back and all of that are integrated into one frame on the power supply, it allows people to build the individual processors, the modules like this, which is our EXBB500, Exciter Big Bottom technology, in a real convenient small format, but we don't have to build a power supply and jacks and a chassis and all of that onto this module. So we can do it at a really attractive cost and honestly an attractive footprint. It, as, as our studios get smaller and smaller and we're more in the box, this allows us to have great analog processing gear, but in a smaller format and more convenient to use. One of the questions was, why did Aphex do a rack? And when we started out in, in uh, last fall when we introduced the six different modules, three mic pre's, an EQ, a compressor, and the exciter, we didn't introduce a rack, and people asked, well, is Aphex going to do a rack? Well, we kind of had to keep our mouths closed because in January, just a couple months later at the NAM show, we did introduce the USB 500 rack. The concept of building the rack, though, was that we wanted to add value to the product. It wasn't going to be just a dumb power supply that added power and a user interface to your modules. We thought by adding more value or making it a more powerful interface, the cost of getting into the 500 series now comes down to the average user because you're getting more out of it. So the concept for us wasn't to make a cheap power supply, but to add more value. And that was by adding a full digital audio workstation right into the power supply. AFEX is a member of the VPR Alliance, which is a standardization um, organization that was set up by API in order to ensure that all of the modules can talk to all of the racks and vice versa. AFEX is a, uh, a member of the VPR Alliance. And that being said, all of our modules, our six modules are all VPR Alliance certified. And our rack, when it comes out, shortly, will also be VPR Alliance. And just simply that means that our rack works with any module and our modules work pretty much with any rack. Talking about the USB 500 rack, as a standalone rack, you could use it just like what is considered or called a lunchbox in the industry. You could put four modules in it and on the back panel, you'll see that there's the typical balanced XLR analog inputs for the four modules and outputs. So in the most simple mode, if you put all of these switches in the analog switch mode, you could put, for example, four mic pre's in. Your microphone cable would plug into input one. The output would go either to your DAW or to your patch bay or however you're connecting this mic preamp, and that would be for all four modules. We have a 
very convenient handle on the side. You could just take it to a gig. You could use it as a front end. You could use it as a mobile recording device. As a simple lunchbox, it's just like any other four input slot device and it'll work with any module on the market, ours or anybody's. In addition to the analog switch, you'll notice that there's a switch that you can switch over that says USB. If you were to switch it to USB, like this, now, if you had four mic pre's in it, mic pre one goes internally to USB one on your I.O. Two would go to two, three to three, four to four, and you also have SP diff, a digital I.O. with an additional two channels. So with that, you have a total of six inputs into your DAW. Also, it's good to know that the analog outputs still remain active even in the USB mode, so it's like a split. So now if you're doing mobile recording, you actually have a monitoring system where you can have monitoring and recording simultaneously, which is really convenient. That's just one of the modes that this will work in. You'll also notice that there's a middle position in these switches that says chain. And what's really interesting about that is you may want to load the front of this with your four favorite modules and create, for example, like a voice chain, a great mic pre, a great compressor, an EQ, maybe an exciter big bottom. You've created your ultimate chain. On a normal lunchbox, you'd now start patching. You'd have an XLR cable that takes the output of one to the input of two, the output of two to the input of three, and so on. But by switching this into the chain mode on two, three, and four, it internally switches it as a chain. So you come in with your microphone cable into one, which is your mic pre. Everything else is internally chained together. You don't need a patch cable, and it's going into USB channel one, so you can record on one. But What's really cool about this is that leaves inputs two, three, and four still open for external mic pre's. Because you've created the internal chain, these are still line level inputs that you can use for additional recording simultaneously at the same time. So you can have a vocal chain, plus a guitar, plus a bass, and maybe something else. So it's a great way to get into your DAW. Another neat feature about this is that USB being bi-directional, this can also be an output device. So this can become your hardware insert. You go into your I.O. setup and assign the USB outputs of your DAW to this device, and now you can use your favorite EQs and compressors as hardware inserts. Also, when you're mixing, there is a link mode in which you can create stereo links in multiples of two, so you could have your two favorite stereo EQs and compressors, for example, and use it for mastering after you've mixed. So bi-directional, it's not just an input device, it's also an output device as well. And that makes it really flexible. You can use it in multiple ways. Now if we go back to the front, you'll notice that in the master module, there is a controller with volume, mono, and dim buttons for your studio monitors. And that controls the TRS balanced outs on the other side of the master module for your studio monitors. And those are true balanced outputs. Below that, you'll notice a headphone with a headphone jack, a headphone with a headphone jack. This is from our famous HeadPod 4 technology, and we've included two channels of it right here on the USB 500 rack. On the back panel, if you look at the master module over here, these are your TRS balanced outputs to go to your studio monitors. SP diff in and out, and SP diff is assignable. We do have word clocks, so if you want to use this in a larger system or use it as an aggregate device, and yes, it can be used as an aggregate device in a system, you can use that. We did include MIDI I.O., and a lot of people are a little puzzled, you know, MIDI, that's old stuff, right? I have a studio full of old stuff, and if this is going to be my only DAW interface, it doesn't force me to buy yet another box in order to have the connectivity to my old drum machines and, and synth modules. And then of course USB 2 with your uh, power connector here at the back. So speaking about USB now, we are using USB 2 as our interface for the DAW, and we have found that with proper drivers, USB 2 is rock solid. Every computer on the planet has USB 2. And because our requirements are not that um, hefty in terms of the I.O. workload, this is a six by eight interface, USB 2 is more than capable. At 96K, we're experiencing in testing so far around two, three millisecond latency 
um, with the drivers that are being developed by Centrance for us, which are very mature, stable drivers. This will be a uh, Core Audio and ASIO device, so it'll work with any software on any platform as well. So you could use it as a standalone DAW, you could use it as an aggregate device as well. We're finding that uh, USB 2 is going to be more than enough to give us the latency we want and the I.O. throughput as well. Of course, one of the questions that's already come up since we've introduced this already is, gee, this is fantastic, nobody's thought of such a thing, are you going to do a bigger one? And the answer is, of course we are. This is yet the first of a family in a series of products that will come from the new Apex.